Now, I'm not against people coming to church. I would love to have more people come to church. I think that's great. But one, we don't gear our church services for the unsaved. We, cheat, we gear them for the saved. One thing you'll notice if you stay through for the whole service, we also don't do any altar calls. And the reason for that is because our church service is geared for people who are already saved. It's not geared for people who are not saved. But here's the thing. Are there going to be people who are unsaved that come into our church services? Absolutely. It's going to happen. And, and is that wrong? Is that bad? No, of course not. But that's why our model and our plan here is that instead of making people, and we were just talking about this last week, right? Imagine going into a church. You've never been, maybe you've never been to church or you've never been to this church before or that church and you don't really know anybody there or maybe you know one person. You're already kind of uncomfortable. You're not saved, but you, you, maybe you want to know Christ. You, you want to get saved. You just don't know how. And you come into church and the only offer that they're offering is, well, hey, come on down the aisle. You sit all the way in the back because you're kind of shy. Maybe you're a little embarrassed. You, you, don't, you don't know anyone. You feel uncomfortable. You're sitting all the way in the back of the church. And they're saying, well, come on up here and we'll tell you how you get saved. And come up in front of everybody and kneel down and we'll have someone come and talk. You know, not everyone's going to do that. Now, everyone who's ever been saved that way, praise God that, some, that, that you got saved. But I don't think that that's the best way of, of preaching the gospel to people. Yeah, that's right. Our model here is for people within the church, when, and, and for any visitors today, don't be offended if someone approaches you after church because this is the way that we do things here. We like to ensure that everyone who walks through these doors knows 100% for certain that they're saved. So the way that we do that and the way that I teach that things should be done here is that as you welcome and greet guests, because we ought to be doing that anyways, being friendly, nice, hospitable, we also ask, well, hey, can I ask you a question, please? Do you know for sure if you were to die today, you'd be going to heaven? Why? Because we care about you. We care about our visitors. We want to know that you know for sure you're going to heaven. And there's a lot of different beliefs out there and there's a lot of false doctrines and there's a lot of people who are trusting in works and there's a lot of people who are trusting in baptism. There's a lot of people who are trusting in other things other than just Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. So that's why we talked to people. And you know what? That's a lot more of a comfortable setting speaking one-on-one -on -one with someone, not being the center of attention, not having all eyes on you, but everyone's kind of mingling around or whatever, then you can have a personal conversation with somebody and not expect them to walk up in front of everybody else in order to make that decision to, to get saved that day. Look, you can make a decision anywhere you are and we want to try to make it as easy as, uh, as easy as possible for people to make that decision, not as hard as possible. You don't have to prove anything to anyone in order to get saved. That's between you and God. That has to do with your heart. You have to prove that you're willing to walk in front of everybody and, and lay down your life. Look, no one's asking you to be Jesus Christ in order to be saved. You don't have to carry that cross in order to be saved. Jesus did that for you already. Let's not lay extra burden on top of people in order for them to get saved. Let's do our best to make it as simple as possible. And that's why we do that here.